I've spent the last two nights imaging the Rosette Nebula. You can just see Orion is up there and I'm gathering a little bit more data at the moment. We've got the 200 PDS, the Altair 269C and that's all riding on the AZ EQ6 and because I have real problems around here with light pollution my solution is to have a large flag on a wooden pole and then it blocks the street lamp and puts the telescope into darkness and it seems to work so I've roughly gathered two hours so far I'm hoping to add another couple of hours tonight this is how I got from this stacked image which you see here to this final image which you see here this is the heart of the Rosette Nebula and I wanted to show you roughly what I did to process this to get to this final image and it was quite an interesting process because there's all sorts of dodgy stuff in this corner which I've kind of masked over slightly but you know it doesn't look too bad so this is how I did it. First of all I started off by dragging and dropping my stacked image into PixInsight. I then did a dynamic crop on this image to tidy up the stacking artifacts that you can see around the corners and that gave me this image which I basically had uh, cropped. I then ran all default settings so this is very much painting by numbers I literally used the default settings and dragged and dropped onto this to do background neutralization I did exactly the same but with color calibration all default settings just dragged the triangle onto the image and then I dragged SCNR onto this image as well after this I then did an automatic background extraction and this was the result. You can see it was really green and it had a lot of green on this corner and a lot of green in these corners here. Now for the automatic background extractor all I did was go to target image correction and I selected subtraction and that was the result. I didn't do anything else on it. As I said very much painting by numbers. Because this was so green I then also ran SCNR again because it looked really green and this was the result when it was green it turned blue so I undid that because I didn't want a blue image because something was clearly missing here and I wasn't sure what was going on so I undid that and I went with the image that was green and I thought I'd just see how it goes I don't know what caused that I kind of thinking that it was almost half moon at the moment it was it's not we're really close to a full moon so we're, it was kind of halfway so I'm not sure if this is light pollution or if it's the moon influencing the shot I don't know after this I extracted the luminance so I extracted luminance this has been stretched I didn't stretch it at the time but because of the way that you process I do a soft stretch later on uh, but the actual images that I saved uh, have been stretched so these would not have been stretched at the time. I then separated the red and I could already see alarm bells are ringing because there was no red detail here which is interesting. And then I subtracted the green and there was lots of green detail there and the blue and there was blue so for some reason there was no red data there which is interesting and I'm not sure why that is but there was no red data so to extract those I just selected the image that I was working on I went to image and extract and the first one was lightness so that's the luminance and then split RGB so red green and blue that was all I did so now that I had my luminance and my red green and blue I could have used the script from the easy processing suite and use easy denoise. Now 
This is absolutely brilliant and I thoroughly recommend it and it is free. It just takes a long time to process. So I'm afraid I cheated and I have now purchased the Blur Exterminator and the Noise Exterminator programs, which are here. Um, so I used the RC Astro Noise Exterminator in this case, and I found that on its default, it was too severe for me. So I've found that I have a happy medium around about 0 0.60. So 60 basically, 0 0.60 on the denoise. And I applied that to each of the luminance, the red, green and blue. And if you look at the luminance here, I think it did a pretty fine job. It's not bad at all. I'm really impressed with this denoise. Um, that's not to say that the easy denoise is bad. It isn't. It's absolutely breathtakingly good. It's just I wanted to, something a bit quicker. So I used the easy denoise tool, which I wholeheartedly recommend. It's brilliant, really good. And it's a bit quicker, which is good. Well, it's quite a lot quicker, actually. After I ran the denoise, I then went into script, easy processing suite, and I ran the easy soft stretch on each of these images. As I said earlier, so these ones are the ones that have had the easy soft stretch applied to them, which we can see here. So that's for the luminance, the red, the green and the blue. Then I did an LRGB combination and it came up with this image here. And you can see quite clearly it's kind of bluey green, which is interesting. So the next step was to remove the stars. So I used Starnet 2, which is here, and I clicked on Create a Star Mask and then it extracted the stars from this image and then created a star mask as well which is here so that was the star mask it created from here i then used the no stars image which is here and i adjusted the curves to get to this sort of orangey red color using the saturation setting here and individually equalizing out the colors until I got something that I thought was about right. Um, you can visibly see there are quite a lot of artifacts from the stars still so you can see the diffraction spikes there. That's okay because we're going to be adding the stars back in and um, I wasn't unhappy about that so that was all right. So basically I, I kept tweaking all of these curves until I roughly found where I wanted to be. Now I did find it went slightly greenish again. And I then used SCNR to pull the green back out. Or if it was too severe with SCNR, I used the curves and then very gently pulled the green out. Not too much. It was getting very blue in the middle here from doing all of the curves transformations I was doing. So I used a range selection to create a range mask which I did here. So this was the range mask that I created from this. And the way I did that is you create a preview of your image, which is there, and then you adjust these sliders. So normally under default, it appears to be white. And then you pull your range selection down until you just get to the area you want, which is the dark areas. And then I made it a little bit fuzzy around the edges. And then I smoothed the fuzziness out like that and then I just created this particular range selection and the idea was to select the black bits in the middle here so that I could only process those black bits. Once I had the range mask I dropped that onto the image like this and basically anything that's red is protected. Anything that's not red will be affected so I then went to the mask and show mask so I could see the image and then again under curves I just wanted to pull the blue out so I created a preview I went to blue and then I gently pulled some of the blue out until it became black but you don't have to be too severe but you you kind of get the idea uh, so I'm only affecting these areas 
here. Then from this, I went into pixel maths and process all processes and pixel math. And then with my expression editor, I got the no stars image and I went plus the star mask, which is there. And then I wanted it as a destination to create a new image. And then I got it to execute and it created this image, which I could then continue processing. By this point, I realized that after reading a little bit on the internet, that I should have used Blur Exterminator a bit earlier in the process, because apparently it works best with unstretched data. But I applied it to this image as we see it now, and this was the result, which I didn't think was too bad, actually. I think it looks quite good. Um, and the one thing that it did do was make the stars smaller and a bit sharper, which is good. And also this detail of the dark nebulosity here began to come out in a bit more detail, which is really good. And again, I don't really know how to use this bit of software at all. And I was just painting by numbers. I just dragged and dropped it on and let it do its thing. And it seemed to do a reasonably good job to my very untrained eye. So uh, yeah, that was kind of it. I did find though that this area is still a bit green. So I think I probably tweaked greenness of this using curves again and pulling some of the green out. But that in essence was kind of the process I used to create this image, give or take a few things. Um, I'm sure there were other bits that I did on the way because I was just doing this around doing other things in the house. So that was roughly the process I used for this picture of the Rosette Nebula.